First, go to the Sevilla website. It's gonna ask you to log in, so just make an account really quick. After that, go to the download page and click the download that fits with your operating system. Pick your preferred language, go through the licensing stuff, and decide where you want Sevilla to be on your computer. Wait 500 years for Sevilla to load. When it opens, you're gonna see this window, and you're probably going to think, God, this doesn't look like Sevilla at all, did I fuck up? You just have to click this plus button and click add song track. After that, click on the piano button, and then this piano roll should pop up. I already have Chisei downloaded, but for you, it's probably gonna say something like no voice or no file. Click on the icon, it'll give you the option to download the most recent version of Chise. The two types of files you're going to be using the most in Sevilla are Music XML and TSSLN. Music XML is a file for an individual track. You can open them in the piano roll, and when you convert files from other synths, you're probably going to convert them to Music XML. TSSLN is a file for the entire project. This saves multiple tracks and any instrumental track that you added. To convert a file, go to the Utaformatics website, click the file type that you want to convert, click what the original lyrics are, and what you want them to turn into, I recommend clicking Kana because in Romaji they're probably gonna be all fucked up. Boom, you're done. In Sevillo, you can only move your place in the song through the mixing window. It's pretty annoying because you have to go back and forth, but that's how it is. Also, only notes that are inside the rainbow section will play. The ones in the black and white part aren't going to play, and Sevillo will remind you every time that you put something there. First, we have the notes tab. These are just the bare bones notes and lyrics. Over here, you can click on the quantize section that basically changes how the grid is divided depending on the timing of your song. Here you you got the pencil, it lets you draw notes. This is the arrow, it lets you click on stuff and move it around. The freeze button pretty much does what it says right there. You won't be able to edit that track, but it'll save you some time when you play it back and it takes a lot of time loading. If you left click, you're gonna see all these other options. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to tell you what they do. Batch lyric entry lets you put in a lot of lyrics at once. You could choose whether you separate them by space or if it's just one note per character. You can see that the phonemes in these notes are written in kind of an interesting way. Every consonant and vowel is separated by a comma, so if you write the sound together, it's not going to understand it. This would be the wrong way to write phonemes, and this would be the right way. This is the timing tab. It looks pretty fucking insane at first, but it's actually pretty self-explanatory. Once you click on the pencil tool, you can slide those around, and it'll change the timing of stuff. So this is what it sounds like at first, and then after I change the timing, it sounds like this. Next, you have volume. This lets you make things louder or quieter. The lower you draw the line, the quieter it is, and the higher you draw the line, the louder it is. Next, you have the pitch tab. This is pretty much where you do all the tuning. You can either use the pencil tool or the line tool. Either way, you have to draw them though, so you're probably gonna get arthritis. Here you have the alpha tab. It's pretty much like the G flag. Drawing a higher line will make her sound lower. And drawing a lower line will make her sound higher. I don't know whose idea that was, but that's how it is. Next is the husk tab. It's pretty much like the breath or the growl parameter of Savio. You can draw a high line if you want to make her sound like a demonic entity. And then drawing a lower line will make her sound clearer. Next, we have the vibrato parameters. I think Savio has the stupidest vibrato parameters ever. You have vibrato amplitude and vibrato frequency. Amplitude is how strong the vibrato is, and frequency is how fast it is. You're going to want to have the pitch parameter visible while you use these two. Note that having a parameter visible is not the same as having it turned on. If the parameter is visible but still frozen, then the tab is going to be gray, but if it's visible and you can edit it, then it's going to be colored. If you want the vibrato amplitude to be stronger, just draw a higher line and and if you want it to be weaker, just draw a lower line. Likewise, if you want the frequency to be faster, just draw a higher line, and if you want it to be lower, just draw a lower line. The reason I don't like this is because you kind of have to do a bunch of finicking to figure out how to make it work. Then even in the end, it's probably gonna sound like shit, to be honest. Personally, I just draw the vibrato myself, but if you like doing things this way, then have at it. They also have these switches in the corner, they're called global parameters. At first I was confused because I was messing with them and nothing was happening, and then I realized that they only affect the parameters that the AI put there, not the ones that you put there, so you can pretty much ignore those because they're kind of useless. As you can see, I completely fucked them up and it didn't change anything. Last but not least, when you're done with your masterpiece, go back to the mixing tab, click File, Export, Audio Mix Down, and delete this little TSSLN part down here so it'll be a normal wave, and then wait forever for it to export. 